Florida Maquis, you sure haven't talked about Venezuela in a very long time. Have you changed your mind? Are you no longer some evil, terrible, horrible socialist? Have you seen what's happened with the migrant crisis and finally come around to the right side of history? And are you going to join us very soon, bowing down deep, worshiping at the altar of mammon, like all capitalists do? Well, the answer to that is no. Absolutely not. In fact, the story of the migrant crisis is a great way to illuminate the ideas of capitalism versus socialism and ask my audience a question. Why do you think they're coming here? They're coming here not because of capitalism, even though they're going to be a victim of it. They're coming here because the United States, which I have alleged for a long time, is a socialist country just with a more powerful currency. That's all it is. Now, real quick, before we get into this, and I show proof of this once again, would like to, as always, say thank you to all of you who have joined us with the Florida Maki Patreon channel. We've talked about this at length over there with the gloves off, and we've shown the specific details of how the U.S., the government, in collusion with the mainstream media, has convinced Americans that they live in a capitalist country when they don't. They live in a socialist one with some free market elements. But the idea of using the MSM to make you believe that everything is as it should be and that all of your finances are just the result of freedom and free markets is just absolutely a case study in psychology where you can literally show somebody something that's the opposite of what's true and have them believe it. If you'd like to join us over at the Patreon channel, it's only one, one single U.S. dollar per month, not per video, not per week, not per creation, and it's fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked, being the most you would ever possibly risk looking at the hundreds of videos over there that have never been seen on YouTube ever, would be $3 that are fully refundable. Would love to have you over there. I think you'd really enjoy the content. Now, let's get into the meat of today's video. Capitalism versus socialism and the migrant crisis. There was a time in this country when we were described as Christian socialists, meaning that in this country what we were doing way back in the 1920s, 1930s during Prohibition, is that we were trying to create a country that didn't have profit motive as its number one driver because we knew what that was going to lead to. There were other things, other factors that came into consideration. Now, there are groups of people in this country right now that are absolutely salivating at the idea of millions of migrants coming to this country and the U.S. handing them thousands of dollars in benefits. Shady car dealers, pawn shops, the adult entertainment industry, and, believe it or not, lonely housewives. All for different reasons. I mean, I want you, to get, I want you folks to think about this for just one minute. Just for one minute, think about millions of people who, for their entire lives maybe have never had more than 20 bucks in their pocket at any one time, all of a sudden being handed thousands of dollars every month. What are they going to do with that money? Well, that's right. They're going to spend it. And they're going to spend it like drunken sailors. And where are they going to spend it? Well, guys, I'm telling you what, after the last two or three years of record inflation, people having to cut back. American pawn shops are full of some of the most spectacular deals that you could ever find. Really great stuff. It's usually garbage in pawn shops. But now, people have had to sell so much stuff. And these pawn shops are overloaded with inventory. You can get some great stuff in there. Super cheap. And that's where these people are going to go. Used car dealers... There are so many cars on so many lots they can't move that are mostly garbage, but to people coming across the border, 
It's a sign of having arrived in America, in the land of the free, the home of the brave, the American dream. And on the more seedy side, there are all sorts of places that have been suffering for the last few years because of inflation, adult entertainment being one of them. These girls are going to clean up. These guys are going to get all these thousands and thousands of dollars, and they're going to go blow them. And this is what really bugs a lot of people. American male obesity is at record highs because of depression, because of everything that's gone on for the last few years. And there's just no interest in doing anything, well, like what perhaps a lonely housewife might be missing in her life. But it gets better. Here's the real winner. And this is the meat of today's video. Powerball and Mega Millions jackpot soar, reach $750 million and $977 million. Now think about this a minute. Those of you who have a real job, those of you who have to go to work every day for your money and have half a brain in your head are like, you know what? I'm not going to pay the stupid tax. I'm not going to pay the dumbass levy. Yes, it would be wonderful to have all that money, but we all know. We all know it's not going to be us. The odds are astronomical against it. But what if it was somebody else's money? What if the government was just handing you the money and you didn't have to do anything for it? Just like all of these migrants, these millions and millions of migrants coming here getting all this money. Yeah. They've never had the money before. They don't know how to handle it. And they're going to blow it on Powerball tickets and Mega Millions tickets and go into the titty bar and all these other things to stimulate the economy because Americans are tightening, tightening their belt. Now, I would like to apologize. I would like to explain something that I didn't explain well enough in a couple of previous videos talking about way back during the war how America was socialist, and I talked about these things called ration stamps, and a lot of people mistook them for what we know today to be modern food stamps. Not the same thing. Modern food stamps is just you getting a card, the government loading it up with, with money, and you being able to go to the grocery store and buy whatever the hell you want with it. Ration stamps were very different back in World War II. Not only did you have to have the money yourself to pay for things, you also had to have a stamp for that thing. You had to have both. The stamp itself didn't pay for the good. Unlike modern food stamps, the stamp was just the idea that you had a right to a certain share of things. And that's what's pictured here on the left. It didn't matter how much money you had. You had to have a stamp, and you turned over the stamp to get the thing, and you still had to pay for it. Rationing means a fair share for all of us. And over here on the right, I pay no more than top legal prices, meaning prices were set by the government, and I accept no rationed goods without giving up rationed stamps, meaning that not all goods, of course, at the grocery store were rationed. There were plenty of things out there that if you had the money, you could buy as much as you want. But certain basic items in this country at that time, you had to have a stamp for. Now, those of you out there saying, well, Florida Monkey, you're conflating socialism in a way that's not really socialism. We control the government, meaning Washington, D.C., control. Drilling, shipping, storing, refining, buying, selling, trading, and taxing of all oil and anybody who uses gasoline to transport products, which means basically everybody. The government is in control of the entire supply chain because they control the cost, su supply, and price of oil, meaning gasoline. I created this acronym a long time ago called Down the Socialist Trails. Taxed, regulated, approved, inspected, insured, licensed, secured, and subsidized. All of these things control business. And the U.S. government does. From top to bottom, left to right, inside and out, 
There's no way you operate as a business outside of the control of the U.S. government. Farmers received $353 billion in subsidies, subsidies, pardon me, over this period of time. We, we pay, literally pay farmers to not grow things and to grow certain other things before they reach even reach the shelf. Now, one of the most avid capitalists on YouTube, the Patriot Nurse, haven't talked about her in a while, I'm not trying to beat her up here, but she did a video where she was talking to her grandpa and talking about living through times that were tough, times that were bad, and related a story where I believe it was either his uncle or father sold on the black market the shoe stamp the government had issued to buy him a pair of shoes because he didn't need one and they needed other things. So they sold the shoe stamp on the black market. Now, all of this put together, the reason we are where we are is not because of the success of capitalism. We are where we are because it's always where capitalism goes. It's always where capitalism goes. You will always serve the richest in society if you're a capitalist. Always. Because the poorest will never be able to compete. And I have a great example that is going to twist a lot of people the wrong way, but that's kind of what we do here. Remember, for such a long time, here on YouTube, I talked about Florida and girls in bikinis at the beach and the natural paradigm that occurs in the summertime when girls go to the beach, guys follow. It has just always been the case. Now, let's think about this in the context of capitalism versus socialism. Let's imagine that you have a food truck that specializes in refreshments at the beach. Snow cones, hot dogs, cold drinks, ice cream, all the different things that you would buy at the beach. Now, you have a certain amount of things that you have to sell every day just to cover the cost of doing business. The gasoline, the cost of the supplies, the time, all this. So you have to be very picky what beaches you go drive up to and serve. Now, on the right, we have the Christian Moral Value Beach. And on the left, we have the normal everyday beach in Florida. Now, on the right, the socialist, Christian socialist, Moral Value Beach, they make sure that there are no girls in bikinis and any woman wearing any kind of a swimsuit is, uh, there's some guy out there and he's got a tape measure. He measures that they're exactly a certain way. And if there's any deviation, they get removed from the beach. Now, how many guys do you think are going to go to that beach? How many guys do you think are going to get together and say, hey, let's grab the football and let's load up the cooler and let's go down to the Christian Moral Value Beach versus the normal beach? See, what do we know about uh, Christian Moral Value folks? They're likely going to pack a cooler. Why? Because they're frugal. Now think about the guy who's selling the refreshments for one minute. He goes to the good old Christian moral value beach and there he's not going to make a dime. He's not going to make a dime because there's going to be fewer people there. And those who are there are probably going to have already brought what they need for the day. So of all the beaches that he can go to, which ones do you think he's going to go to? That's right, the going to hell beach. That's right, you know, the beach where everybody's, you know, wearing whatever they want to wear and they're playing football and running around and doing all this kind of stuff. Why? Because this is just how capitalism works. Now, you can believe whatever you want about capitalism and how, well, you crony capitalism and all this kind of stuff. This is just how things work. People are going to go where the money is. And those of you who think it's a new thing, some modern thing that's happened since the 1980s or 90s, this is Cocoa Beach, Florida, a picture from the 1950s. Just saying. You see, it's not an either or. 
when I was talking about Venezuela, Venezuela was a socialist country, yes. And they were our ally, yes. And they were a very Christian country as well. This is the leader. You know, that terrible, horrible, awful guy they told you was a dictator who stood up before the UN and said, give me your crown, Jesus. Give me your cross, your thorns, so that I may bleed, but give me life because I have more to do for this country and these people. Remember that evil guy that said that? Put that in context of how many Miss Universe Venezuelas there were. 79, 81, 86, 96, 2008, 2009. Funny, not since the U.S. attacked financially has there been one, 2013. Ask yourself, in a country that was uh, supposedly dead set on destroying capitalism and capitalist values, how could this have been? How could this have been? You see, you look at all seven of these young ladies, and if I didn't tell you they were Venezuelan or show you their their names, many people would have looked at them and said, wow, those, those are Europeans. Those are white people. That's exactly what... There's maybe one person here that you might look at that you might think might be Hispanic, but not most of them. See, these are the great lies about capitalism versus socialism. See, you can take liberal progressives and give them the idea of socialism, and they're going to try to use government to create a society that puts their values ahead of money. Or you can take a Christian socialist, and they will do the same thing. They will say, our ideas are more important than making money or making profit. So it's not the idea of socialism or capitalism, it's just who's implementing it. Because the Christianity is the ultimate form of socialism. You're supposed to be poor. That's in the Bible. You're supposed to be poor. Forget what all the modern prosperity preachers say. There's chapter and verse in the Bible, many of them, about how when you are rich and increased with goods and have want and need of nothing, you will end up being what the Bible refers to as the Laodicean church. That God in, I believe it was Revelation, said he would spew out of his mouth. So you can choose whatever you want. You can make believe, you know, one over the other is better, but believe me, this is all a result of socialism. They're fleeing capitalism because they're coming here because they know they're going to get money from the government to go spend. And then people are going to say, well, look at capitalism. Look how great things are going. Why do you think Trump doesn't want the border crisis solved until he has a chance to run for president and get credit for it? Think about that. He doesn't want it solved. They don't want it solved. They want their issue. So that when all these people finally get here and they all get that money and they all start spending that money and it starts to turn around the economy, good old mammon can laugh and throw his coins in the air and say, see, we told you so. We told you so. We told you so. But nobody's going to see what the reality is. There's a sucker born every minute. And there are people, capitalists, people you would think would be all for Trump that are just absolutely chomping at the bit to get to these people who have all of this money and don't know how to handle it. So I will leave it there. Thank you. God bless all of you that have joined us over Patreon. Very much, absolutely is making a huge change in my life. It's kind of a meld of both capitalism and socialism together where crowdfunding, where groups of people who believe a certain thing say, you know what? We're going to support this idea. That's why I have it set at the lowest allowable level of one US dollar per month. Would love to have you over there. Thank you so much, all of you, those of you who are there. 
God bless. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Pray for each other. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.